Hi, I'm Joe Fielder. I'm here to talk to you about Onimusha. It's a new survival horror game from Capcom, a company that's responsible for Resident Evil. Uh, Onimusha has kind of been called Resident Evil with Samurai. That's sort of similar to back when Dino Crisis was first talked about. It was called uh, Resident Evil with Dinosaurs. This is probably a little more applicable for the original Dino Crisis. Once they got into Dino Crisis 2, it was you know a lot different. It was a much more actiony feel than a Resident Evil game. Onimusha is kind of similar. It's uh, it's much more actiony in scope and feel and and control than uh, a Resident Evil game, and it really kind of breaks away from that general mold. As a masterless samurai, and your goal is to rescue local princess from a group of demons. You want to destroy the demons, they're bad, they're killing people, and uh, you want to put a stop to it. And luckily you, you're given a, a magic gauntlet from a group of ogres. Uh, that's pretty much all you hear about the ogres is that they want to give you this gauntlet. And the gauntlet is uh, it's empowered with their ability to suck souls from the, the fallen demons and uh, the, the demons souls then give you power. Uh, the story is a little bit weak. The story is kind of cliche both by Japanese and US standards and there's a little bit of a problem with the telling of the story is that the in-game sequences um, well the dialogues either badly translated or just badly written there's also a little bit of a disconnect with the, the, the in-game sequences uh, with the people's voices. Their lips will continue moving after uh, after the people are done talking, so it's kind of like a uh, Lady Kaide, kind of like a badly dubbed movie. Nobunaga has finally engaged the enemy. In light of the entire game, it's really not too great of a deal, but it is disappointing in light of the game's pretty high uh, production standards. The graphics are really fantastic. It's it's the best looking game of its kind. Uh, the CG sequences are the best we've seen since Resident Evil Code Veronica. They're, they're pretty much neck and neck uh, with Code Veronica. The in-game story sequences with the, you know, the, the game engine look better than other games' the CG sequ sequences. Uh, the rendered backgrounds in the game are probably the, the best rendered backgrounds you, you've seen in the game yet. It's overall, uh, the graphics might not be the same achievement that, say, Shenmue was. I mean, they are rendered backgrounds, but the graphics are in the same class. They're definitely rivals. There are a lot of, like, little tiny effects in Onimusha that are, are pretty impressive. In Code Veronica, you saw there was a zombie that would wander, wander about with red eyes, and you'd have little trailers from his eyes as he walked, and it looked really, really nice. In this game, there are these uh, zombie ninja who bounce all over the place, and they've got the same sort of effect on their eyes, but it's green. And since they're they're jumping all over the place, they've got these little green trailers zooming all over the place, and it, it looks looks pretty sharp. Uh, there's also there's also an effect when you kill one of those uh, zombie ninja, they kind of explode into this bloody smoke, and it's kind of like uh, in the in the end of the movie Blade, where they they pulled out all the stops with their CG animation and and had a lot of bloody smoke effects. They, they, they pull that out in Onimusha as well. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty impressive. You know, the main difference between Onimusha and, and you know, the Resident Evil series is its action-y feel. The control's been tweaked uh, a little bit. It's still, you know, generally, if you've played Resident Evil, you'll, you'll just feel pretty at home with uh, Onimusha controls. The gauntlet has uh, a lot of effect in the game. When you kill an enemy, it gives off you know, this little soul energy that you're able to collect if you have the time before someone else is attacking you. There are three types of soul energy. There's, there's yellow soul energy, which recharges your health, and there's blue energy, which recharges your magic meter, which you use for special attacks. And then there's also red soul energy, which is kind of experience points. You, uh, when you get to a magic mirror, which also kind of double as save points, you can use the red soul energy to enhance your items, such as your swords, so they can have, uh, you know, greater, give greater damage. You can enhance uh, your orbs, which you use to unlock doors that have special spells on them. Say you come up on a door that has uh, three orbs on it, three red orbs on it, you need to make sure that your, your uh, red orb is powered up to the point uh, where it can open up that door. You also have the ability to 
upgrade uh, just basic items like arrows, like herbs. You can upgrade your herbs into medicine, which is more powerful, gives you more health. You can uh, upgrade your arrows into fire arrows, which do more damage. So what this allows you to do is you, you're not, you don't have to be as much of a miser with your items as you were in Resident Evil or any of the Resident Evil games. I think everyone out there who's ever played a Resident Evil game has had to start over again at some point because they used all their shotgun shells on a zombie. They weren't able to get past a boss. You don't have to worry about that as much in Onimusha since you can recharge through alternate means and you can just kind of enjoy the fighting, which is you know, very fast, very decisive, and very fun. One of the other nice things about it, one of the other things that kind of uh, differentiates it or kind of tweaks the, the whole Resident Evil premise is the puzzles are really built for speed. Um, it may sound a little bit simple, but it's really, uh, it's really pretty cool. It's pretty refreshing to not have to constantly backtrack. You played a lot of Resident Evil games, you know a lot of your time is spent backtracking, going back to your item box because you haven't been able to carry all the key components. You've got to you know, put together items and then go back to an area farther away and, uh, and you know, fix that puzzle. In this game, there's no item boxes. There's basically no backtracking. Instead of item boxes, you, know, you get an item, you got it forever. Um, if there's a case where you have to backtrack, there's usually a shortcut that you open up. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. And that's, uh, that's something that a lot of people who haven't liked survival horror games will like about the game. It's uh, one of the complaints about the game is its length. It will take you about two or three nights of just leisurely gameplay to, to play through the game. And that is a little bit short. It's a little bit short compared to games like Resident Evil Code Veronica, where you've got an extra character to play through, uh, you know, after, you're, after you beat the game. Uh, but not having a lot of backtracking, having a more action-y feel, not having a lot of tedious puzzles to worry about really makes up for a lot. It's been the sort of, it's the sort of game that, you know, I've heard a lot of people who've, who've remarked that Dino Crisis 2 is uh, a game that, that they really liked, even though they don't like survival horror games. And I think that Onimusha is pretty much the same way. It's a survival horror game for people who don't like survival horror games. People who are really into you know, the Resident Evil series may, may find the length a little bit disappointing, but I think a lot of uh, other people are going to be pretty happy with it. Welcome to GameSpot Live. I'm Greg Kasavin here to discuss Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny for the PlayStation 2. Uh, it's the sequel to a game that came out last year, uh, and it's a game that certainly deserved an encore because it's about a uh, soul-stealing samurai fighting lots of demons in medieval Japan. That's, that's a pretty cool premise, uh, so the sequel was inevitable. And uh, sort of like the Castlevania series, uh, it's really just a retelling of the original story. Uh, once again, you play this uh, lone samurai swordsman who must defeat the the evil, uh, demonic, resurrected warlord Nobunaga who ransacked his town and is causing havoc throughout Japan. Uh, so it's up to you to stop him. In addition to the plot, the game has still more in common uh, with its predecessor. It, it basically plays the same um, and it, it's of similarly short length and basically will be a familiar experience to those who played and enjoyed the first game. Uh, at the same time, those players as well as uh, newcomers to Onimusho, we'll, we'll find that the game does suffer from uh, certain problems that, that hold it back a little. Um, and, uh, you know, they'll wish that the game was ultimately uh, a bit better and, and a bit longer, uh, though they'll really appreciate the, the really outstanding production values uh, throughout the game from beginning to end. Throughout most of Onimusha 2, you play as Jubei Yagyu, who is uh, the samurai who, whose town is destroyed at the beginning of the game in, in this really impressive a pre-rendered cutscene. Um, he'll meet up with four different uh, adventurers along the course of his journey and sometimes these guys will fight at his side and at other occasions you may even get to control them uh, w which is nice although they control uh, pretty similarly to Jubei even though they have different moves. You'll either be used to the controls in the game or there'll be something that'll really frustrate you because once again uh, Capcom is uh, stubbornly refusing to allow the player to use analog controls and you're stuck with kind of the classic 
Resident Evil control scheme where you push left and right on the digital pad to rotate your character and push up on the pad to run forward and back to retreat. Um, it's an awkward system if you've never used it before or uh, you'll be uh, familiar with it from previous games. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it seems like a game that's action-packed and, and actually rather fast-paced like Onimusha 2 should have had analog control. Nevertheless, you'll find that uh, the controls, once you get used to them, are pretty responsive. And although you can get through much of Onimusha 2 just by hammering on the square button to slash repeatedly, the game actually rewards you for using some finesse. Uh, for instance, if you slash at an opponent just as he's about to hit you, you, you can execute this critical strike that kills the enemy in a single blow. The action is fast and smooth, uh, but one thing that gets in the way is the fact that Onimusha 2 plays like the Resident Evil games, so the camera angle uh, arbitrarily switches as you move from scene to scene. Um, sometimes it'll set you up in a position where you can't see where the enemy attacks are coming from, or uh, you'll have a bad perspective on the action. Uh, this can be particularly troublesome in, in boss battles where sometimes you won't know where the enemy is going to hit you from. And actually the boss battles, uh, compared to the rest of the game, are really quite tough. Unlike the previous game, Onimusha 2 is actually pretty easy starting out, though it does get hard when you run into the first couple of boss encounters. Uh, after you die a few times, the game all but begs you to switch to the easy difficulty mode, at which point the game becomes a cakewalk, so uh, you'd better off not uh, switch to the easy mode and stick to normal and get a little more life out of the out of the thing. Still, all told, it, it'll take you probably about uh, 10 hours or less to get all the way through the game. It's a short journey, but there's a good blend of action and, and kind of cinematics as you go on through. Uh, th the game's 3D character models look really, really good, and, and so do the, the various static scenes you'll go through. It's, it's just a really fabulous looking game, uh, just, just fun to look at. Uh, the enemy characters are, are creative and fun to watch. The animation is all motion captured and, and looks terrific. And you'll see some really nice uh, cutscenes, both using the game's engine and also uh, pre-rendered ones, like, like at the beginning. Then again, there's plenty to fight. You'll, you'll literally fight hundreds of monsters uh, before you get to the end of the game, so this isn't a slow and plotting game like some of the Resident Evils. It really is all about action. Although Onimusha 2 sounds really good for the most part, one real problem with it is the English voice acting. In the previous games, you had the option of uh, playing the games with Japanese speech, which was really great because, you know, there are these games that take place in feudal Japan anyway. It seems only natural that the characters speak in their native language, and you're probably interested in Onimusha because it's this game about samurai. Uh, it's not like uh, the Japanese language is going to turn you off. For some reason, though, there's no Japanese option in Onimusha 2. You're stuck listening to English, and it's bad English at that. Other than that, it's certainly easy to recommend Onimusha 2 if you like the previous game, since they're so similar. Once again, the, the challenge is to run around while, uh, while defeating your opponents, but then you also have to absorb their souls after you've beaten them. Uh, it makes for some interesting gameplay that, that's really just a lot more exciting than, than some of the gameplay you may be used to from other survival horror games. This really isn't a survival horror game at all. It's more of an action adventure similar to games like Devil May Cry. Since the game is pretty short, there's actually some good incentive to re replay it multiple times. Uh, there's a harder difficulty level, which will definitely be a challenge for you. And there's some cool extras that you can unlock. And since the gameplay itself is basically fun, there's reason to play through more than once. Uh, the extras are pretty funny. Um, there, there's some traditional stuff like art galleries, but also some mini games you could play uh, that, that can be pretty enjoyable. All in all, Onimusha 2 sticks pretty closely to the formula of its predecessor, but it tells an original story, uh, looks a lot better than the previous game, and like the previous game, it's, it's basically just fun to play for the short duration that it lasts. Uh, if you like the previous game, you should certainly check it out, and if you missed uh, the first Onimusha, then it's also worth taking a look at Onimusha 2 which, uh, if nothing else, is just really a, a, an example of a really gorgeous PlayStation 2 game. In Onimusha 3, the dreaded warlord Nobunaga returns yet again. The main characters of this series have been utterly unable to stop him once and for all, but this time, for sure, you're going to have to do it. 
And yet this time, not only does the action take place in medieval Japan, but some of it takes place in modern day Paris. It seems that Nobunaga has found a way to open these time rifts into the present. So you're gonna be fighting demons in modern city streets as well as in the past. Onimusha 3, of course, is the latest action adventure game in a series that originally debuted as sort of a Resident Evil spin-off. It, it was a game involving a lot more uh, sword slashing and, uh, and hacking through demons and things like that rather than conserving ammunition. So the pace has always been much faster, much more action-oriented than in Resident Evil, and that's certainly true in Onimusha 3. At heart, this is basically a pure action game. You're doing a lot of fighting the whole time, but there's also some light puzzle solving and some exploration and some story elements, too. The Onimusha series has also always featured impressive production values and lifelike characters, and that's certainly true of this latest chapter. In fact, one of the game's main characters you'll notice is the spitting image of actor Jean Reno, this is who you've seen in show. movies like The Professional and Mission time. Impossible and Ronin. Uh, here he plays one of the game's two main characters, the other of which is Samanosuke, who you may recognize from the original Onimusha game. Basically, Samanosuke and Jean Reno's character, whose name is Jacques, end up an unlikely duo. They're both granted the power of the Oni, which gives them the ability to use these elemental weapons and absorb uh, the souls of their fallen enemies. So uh, basically what happens is Osama Nosuke ends up in the present and Jacques ends up in the past. And they're both trying to defeat Nobunaga and get back to their respective times. The story of the game, it's basically a good setup for a lot of interesting puzzles where you'll actually be transferring items back and forth through the past or into the future uh, and manipulating time that way. But really, the story doesn't go too far, and occasionally it gets off track a little bit, like uh, Jacques' son uh, gets a little too much screen time in the game, and uh, the characters are left to kind of ponder things that don't really seem relevant when they're fighting for their lives. But anyway, this isn't the greatest story ever told, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some funny moments and uh, some interesting moments and a lot of pure action. In addition to the interesting change of scenery, Onimusha 3 offers two main enhancements over its predecessors. One is that it has fully 3D backgrounds this time, whereas the previous games have had 2D pre-rendered backgrounds. And the other is that there's an entirely new and greatly improved control scheme that's a huge relative improvement on the previous control scheme. Uh, in the past, you controlled your main character kind of like a cement truck. It was pretty unwieldy, and though the control scheme worked okay for the Resident Evil series, it was never that great for Onimusha, which sort of encouraged you to be a lot more mobile and maneuverable. Now, basically, the character runs where you aim your analog stick, so it's a lot uh, easier to maneuver about the battlefield. The action is fast and responsive here, and it's very accessible. You can basically just mash on the attack buttons and execute pretty effective combos that way, but there's also some depth here for those of you who want to really get into the game and master some of the intricacies. Basically, this gameplay rewards split-second timing and uh, rewards the sort of actions that uh, the best kinds of action games uh, really encourage you to do. Uh, the, the game is really just as responsive as you are. What happens is you can execute these critical hit moves by timing your attack at the very moment your opponent is about to strike you or by deflecting the opponent's attack and then attacking immediately. The timing is extremely precise, but you can master it after a while. What happens when you pull these moves off is not only do you instantly kill the average opponent, but you also generate more soul orbs from the defeated foe, which are basically used as currency and they also restore your health, so basically you're earning more money in the game by fighting well, and then you could upgrade your weapons and defenses and things like that. Onimusha 3 is a single-player action-adventure game. It'll take you about 15 hours the first time through. The default normal difficulty is well-balanced and provides a good challenge, but there's an easy mode that gets unlocked if you die a number of times. A hard mode also becomes available after you finish the game for the first time. There are plenty of other extras, too, such as a side quest involving one of the game's peripheral Wait. characters. The game even offers options Sorry. for the degree to which you want to see violent content, whether you want red or strength. green or no blood, for instance. What for? One option you don't get, though, is an option for the original Japanese voiceover, though the French characters speak in their native language at the beginning and at the end of the game. In the end, Onimusha 3 is an excellent installment in the series. Any fan of the series is going to really enjoy it, but pretty much anyone who likes the idea of this game is going to like it, too. And really, its few setbacks are very marginal. It just, you know, you can complain about the voice acting or the story or things like that. But when you get down to the core action and the basic mechanics involved, they all work very, very well. So the game is enjoyable to play for as long as it lasts. So do check it out.
What are you planning? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. The Onimusha series has been around uh, practically as long as the PlayStation 2 has been around, and Onimusha Dawn of Dreams is the fourth main episode in the series, and it really delivers a lot of what fans have grown to love about these games, in that it's all about a demonic infestation of Japan and you cutting down hordes of these nasty zombie demon things, uh, while also engaging in uh, this, this really uh, kind of overblown, lavishly produced story that's a cross between anime and a soap opera. The storyline is completely new this time around, so you don't need previous experience with the past games in order to get what's going on and to be able to appreciate that Soki, who's this bleach blonde haired guy wearing blue samurai armor, is single-handedly trying to save Japan. The story of the game is uh, very, very loosely based on real characters, so instead of Oda Nobunaga, the warlord who was ransacking Japan in the previous Onimusha games, instead you've got his successor Hideyoshi, who is doing basically the same old thing. So as Soki, you're out trying to defeat him, and you're joined by these other companions who turn out to be totally unique characters, actually. They have their own different fighting styles. You've got everything from this little ninja girl who's got a really fast moves and can dart around really quickly to a guy who's from Spain and has a big frilly collar and a funny hat and arms like Frankenstein's monster and basically just punches everything. Uh, so there's quite a bit of character variety in this game um, and that's definitely one of the best things about it. Um, on top of that, it's also a lot longer than previous games in the series. Expect to take at least 15 hours on your first time through the adventure and that's if you skip over a lot of the kind of supplemental story stuff and some of the hidden extras and all that. If you go back through, uh, it can easily take you 20 hours or more. And then on top of that, you unlock additional difficulty modes. There's a two-player arena battle mode, and the back of the box even touts a cooperative mode for two players that's unlockable. But you don't actually unlock it by finishing the game, so it's pretty well hidden in there. The underlying mechanics of the gameplay are the same no matter which character you're controlling, but throughout much of the game, you're actually playing with two different characters running around at the same time. You can switch control of them directly just at the touch of a button and the other guy is going to be controlled by the computer when you're not controlling him. This actually figures into play through a lot of the puzzles in addition to just during the action sequences. Uh, the characters do feel distinctly different even though the actual mechanics apply across the board. There's also quite a bit of puzzle solving in this game. This is partly uh, how the game achieves its significant longevity, because uh, once in a while there's just going to be a puzzle to throw you for a loop, and there are all these different puzzle boxes around where if you solve them, you can get cool treasure that way. There's just tons and tons of stuff to find in this game, which is cool. It gives it a role-playing game feel to it, and you can upgrade your weapons and find all these different swords, each with their own properties, and basically customize your character that way. You'll run into boss fights pretty often in this game, and you'll run into some of the same bosses multiple times. A lot of these fights are actually pretty drawn out and seem to test your, your patience and perseverance as much as your actual skill. But there's really a great uh, skill-based aspect to the game in that you could pull off these critical hits by timing your attacks or even your defense at just the right moment, and you get a nice kind of flashy move at the end of this and it really doesn't cease to be exciting. It's been one of the things that's helped make Onimusha more than just this hack and slash mindless game. As you can see, it really helps matters that this game looks as good as it does and it also sounds terrific too. You've got both an English and a Japanese language track which fans are going to appreciate and the whole thing just uh, has uh, kind of this uh, remarkable sense of style to it. It's, it's fun to look at even when uh, the dialogue is just uh, totally bonkers. Ultimately, you could tell that this game was created for fans of the series. It really plays it safe in a way in that it delivers more of what the series has, has always done, uh, only more so because it's, it's a bigger, longer game with more characters, more stuff to find, and so forth. Still looks terrific and all that. So if you've liked what the series has done in the past, uh, this is a very easy direction for you to go in, and you'll probably enjoy this one at least as much as the others. Uh, on the other hand, if you're new to the series, you could get into this one. It doesn't require your previous experience, but uh, be prepared for kind of a, a wild story that doesn't always seem quite well translated from the original Japanese. Uh, even so, there's just enough pure, fun, exciting action in here to keep uh, pretty much anyone satisfied for a while.